The year is eight. Roman Emperor Augustus just invented another month of summer. Jesus just got a D minus in his elementary school swimming class. Jesus Cornelius Christ, did you walk on water again? <laughs> and in the city of Rome, a hot blooded young Roman man on a night out with his mates thought to himself, What would I give for a Big Mac right now? Wait, can I just make a Big Mac? And that's a great question because at that time, the Roman Empire was, scientifically speaking, very big. And they traded with places that were, scientifically speaking, very far. And they were so culturally advanced that they had things like running water and alligators fighting prisoners to death for the sole purpose of entertainment. So surely enough someone could have potentially used their wealth and influence to make something as simple as a Big Mac. So what is in a Big Mac anyways? A Big Mac consists of a top bun with sesame, a bottom bun, as well as a mysterious and controversial middle bun. It has 7 grams of yellow onion, 30 grams of shredded lettuce, 2 slices of pickles, 2 beef patties seasoned with salt and pepper, 1 lonely slice of cheese, and 20 milliliters of mega super secret Big Mac sauce. So let's start our culinary journey with one of my ancestors, Panem Hamburgarius, the burger bun. While well, Romans probably wouldn't have had access to flour that was as fine and white as ours, wheat was ubiquitous in Europe. And although the Triticum estivum is a lot more resilient and yields a lot more than it did 2000 years ago, it was in some form or another definitely available to the Romans. And at the time, the Romans definitely knew how to make their own bread. It'll be likely that the dough is sourdough, though. Though sesame would have been hard and more expensive to come by, it would have been far from impossible to get. The Romans were well aware of its existence and probably acquired it from their trade routes in Egypt and the Middle East. In fact, one of the rejected names for the Silk Road was of course Sesame Street. Next up we have the food equivalent of sparkling water. Lettuce. The type of lettuce most commonly used on the Big Mac is iceberg lettuce. This is a type of lettuce that was adapted for the Northern American market, which probably wasn't around in Roman times. Did you know which lettuce was around in Roman times? Exactly. Romaine lettuce. Since it's not integral to the taste, we'll just use that instead. Next on the list, onions. Yes, the Romans had onions. Various types of onions even. And although historians aren't quite sure where the onion comes from, they have found traces from 7,000 years ago in China and from 3,000 years ago in Pharaoh Ramses IV eye socket. Have you tested his eye sockets for traces of onion yet? What's wrong with you? So onions, check. Next up, pickles. Pickles are of course just cucumbers having an extra long bath in extra salty salt water and vinegar. Cucumbers were definitely around back in those days and grow just about anywhere where there's enough water. Water. Yes, they did have water. Salt. Salt was so important for the Romans that they were paid in it, and that's where the term salary comes from. That is probably not true as there's no historical evidence for this claim whatsoever, but it sounds really good and it's a cool fact that will make you popular on any party. Did you know that salt was so important for the Romans that they- Oh my god, will you shut up about Rome, you creep? Rome did have a big salt mine at one of the major ports in Ostia, quite literally right next to the city of Rome itself. Vinegar. It's of course made from fermented wine. Did Romans have wine? Of course. I mean, if you were to ask the average Roman whether they have a bottle of water or a bottle of wine on them, they probably would have looked at you puzzled at the idea of carrying around bottled water. If you compare a map of naturally occurring grape wines and a map of the Roman Empire at that time, you will find that they are almost suspiciously similar. Pickling. According to the De Re Culinario, Book 1, Chapter 28, 30, and a couple others by Marcus Apicius, the Romans also knew how to pickle stuff as they pickled various fruits and vegetables for conservation as well as taste. And so pickles are added without a problem. At this point, we could charge full price and call it the vegan option, or we'll move on to the next ingredient. Cheese. Cheese is just a cow's milk plus time. The Romans did indeed have cows, and they did indeed have time. In fact, the Romans made all kinds of cheeses. Roman author Pliny the Elder dedicates two whole chapters of his natural history encyclopedia just to cheese. According to him, the Romans knew of and appreciated hard cheese, soft cheese, old cheese, young cheese, mild cheese, salty cheese, cow cheese, goat cheese, sheep cheese, and variations of those from various parts of the world. 
wouldn't quite have been the same that you'd find on a Big Mac today, because that's more like cheddar. And cheddar is from cheddar, which is in Somerset, which is in England, which the Romans hadn't conquered just yet. The first mention of cheddar is actually from the year 1170, when King Henry II was so fond of cheddar from cheddar that he ordered 10,240 pounds of cheddar. My oh my, that's a lot of cheddar. But all in all, the Romans could have made a cheese that's at least somewhat similar in terms of consistency. The next thing on the shopping list is the patty. Probably the easiest and most similar of the ingredients would be the minced beef patties, as cows were definitely around and Romans did in fact know how to ground the meat, and how to prepare it from a technical point of view. The meat would probably have been a bit less fatty than today, but overall, uh, pretty similar. You wouldn't even have needed to raise your own cattle for that, as there was a butcher with his own market stall near the Roman Forum. Ave. For seasoning, salt as well as pepper would have been available at that time, as the Romans just opened up new trade routes to India, where they could have gotten their hands on black pepper as well as a wealth of other spices. So the patties are also not much of a problem. And so, lastly, the mega super secret Big Mac sauce. For that, they would of course have needed access to the secret recipe, which the Romans actually had, as at the Battle of Alesia in 52 BC, Caesar defeated Bercingetorix and famously captured Ronald McDonald. Thus, they found out that the sauce is mainly oil, pickles, onions, mustard, vinegar, garlic and egg yolk. Nowadays, the oil that is specified on their website under allergy information is soybean oil. That would be a problem for the average Roman as the soybean was only introduced to Europe around the 18th century. Luckily, however, in a video released by McDonald's executive chef Dan Crudeau, I'm the executive chef for McDonald's. He makes the sauce with a base of store-bought mayonnaise. So we'll just use that. Mayo is most often made with rapeseed oil, which comes from the common rapeseed plant Brassica napus. It's one of the oldest cultivated crops in human history and has been around in India since 4000 BC. So that one could have been around in Rome as well. Pickles, onions and vinegar already checked off, so next on the list we find mustard. The origin of mustard is a bit more difficult to pinpoint, but it's very likely that white mustard was around in the Mediterranean region for several thousand years. One of the other spices that is specified in the sauce is turmeric. Originally from India, the Curcuma longa plant has been found in a merchant's tomb in Israel from 2000 BC, suggesting that it could have been around in Roman times as well. Garlic is the other spice used for the sauce. According to Publius Virgilius Maro, garlic had been eaten by Greek and Roman soldiers, sailors and especially in rural regions. Fun fact 37, the name garlic actually comes from the old English words gar and lick, which means spear-shaped leek, because the clove sort of looks like the sharp end of a spear and the other part looks like leek. And that's another great icebreaker at a party. Did you know? No. Next up, eggs. Eggs, of course, come from chickens, which come from eggs, which come from chickens, which hatch from eggs, which were invented by fictional character Leonardo da Vinci from the Ubisoft game Assassin's Creed 2. The Gallus Gallus Domesticus chicken that we know today, however, was first domesticated in Southeast Asia and imported to Egypt in 1500 BC for the sole purpose of cockfighting. The whole eating it part was literally just an afterthought. The primarily egg-laying domesticated version reached Greece and Rome around 500 BC. And so last, but not least, eggs. Check. In conclusion, with only a couple of minor adjustments, all of the important ingredients found in a Big Mac today would have been accessible for the Romans around 8 AD. So Congratulations, Mr. Roman man, if you managed to gather all of these ingredients because A, you can make a Big Mac. And B, you're probably pretty wealthy because there was no way that the average Roman citizen would have had the coin-shaped sphere of influence to gather all of these ingredients at the same time. However, the reason that we're talking about Big Mac and not virtually any other burger is that that's basically the only one the Romans could have made. Not because they were afraid of lacking a supportive middle bun, but because contrary to what I believe, the Romans did not have access to tomatoes, because those were from America. So they couldn't have made any burger with tomatoes, anything with ketchup, anything with a tomato-based sauce, heck, they couldn't have made pizza. What a sad existence. And here I thought, they were a civilized society. However, now the whole drive for conquest and expansion by Rome makes a lot more sense. They were just looking for tomatoes. They didn't mean any harm.
Guys, have you seen a plant about this size with 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 red balls on it? Tell them they're not apples. They're, which are not apples. They're not apples. Karl, was wollen die von uns? Ich ich weiß es nicht. Ich glaube, sie wollen Äpfel. War it is. If you like this video and you want to see more like it in the future, subscribe to my channel. Thank you to all of my patrons. And a special thanks to all the new patrons. Araja, Gray, Grandma of Mike, Alex Sanchez, Alex Hauschild, Hannah, The Rock, Rakala, Tom Wang and James's Fresh Banana Shakes. If you want your name to be next in the credits of all of this channel's videos forever, do what they did and become one of my first 100 patrons. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Habere Pulkra Dies. Originally from India, the curcuma, curcu, curcuma. Originally from India, the curcu, curcuma, curcuma, the curcuma longa. Originally from India, the curcuma, curcuma, the curcuma longa, the curcu, curcuma. <sighs> Jesus.